Hi everyone and welcome. So great that you could join me today on Storytime 365. My name is Barbara and with April arriving tomorrow and April Fool's Day as well, today's story is called The April Fool's Treasure Hunt. Everyone knows that April Fool's is a day for telling practical jokes, but did you know that these jokes are meant to end by noon? Today's story has been written by Susanna Leonard Hill with illustrations by Jeffrey Ebeler. Phyllis knew everything about the weather. After all, she was Puxatawney Phyllis, weather prophet extraordinaire. So when she woke up on April 1st, the day of the spring treasure hunt, it took only one whiff of the morning air to tell her something wasn't right. We have to cancel the treasure hunt, she announced at breakfast. There's a blizzard coming. Everyone was stunned. A blizzard, said Uncle Phil, in April? Then Phil Jr. started to laugh. You actually had me fooled for a second, he said. Yeah, Phyllis, snickered Pete. Not a bad joke. This isn't an April Fool's joke, insisted Phyllis, but no one paid any attention. Aunt Patsy flooded her pancakes with homemade maple syrup and passed the jug to old grandfather Groundhog. What a great year for syrup, he said. I can't remember a year when the sap has run this long. That's because winter isn't over, said Phyllis. I'm telling you, we're going to have a blizzard today. Give up, Phyllis, said Pete. If folks don't listen, Phyllis said, they'll be in danger when the blizzard comes. A bit later, Phil Jr. came in from outside. Phyllis is right, he said. It's freezing. He held out his paws to Aunt Patsy. They're like icicles, she exclaimed. We can't have the treasure hunt if it's this cold. I told you, began Phyllis. April fool, shouted Phil Jr. I used a bag of ice to make my paws cold. Very funny, said Phyllis, but everyone else laughed. A few minutes later, Pete yelled down from the mouth of the burrow. Phyllis really was right. It's snowing. Everyone rushed up the tunnel. Sure enough, a curtain of fat white flakes drifted across the opening. Oh my, exclaimed Aunt Sassy. April fool, shouted Pete. It's only confetti. Make all the jokes you like, said Phyllis. Just cancel the treasure hunt so no one gets lost in the snow. But nobody listened. The grown-ups sat in the sun outside the burrow to swap tall tails and sent the youngsters off on the treasure hunt. Hmm, said Phyllis, reading the first clue. What goes up in the morning and down at night? The sun, guessed Cousin Jill. We can't go to the sun for the next clue, said Phil Jr. Uncle Phil's trousers, suggested Pete. All the little groundhogs giggled. They raced over to Uncle Phil and felt in his pockets, but there was nothing there. There must be something else, said Jill. How about the thermometer, suggested Phyllis. They hurried to the thermometer by the door of the sugar house. Inside, the big kettle still filled the air with sweet maple steam, even though it was April. Ooh, it's nice and warm in here, said Cousin Willis. No one noticed that the thermometer had dropped below 30 degrees. All they saw was the second clue. What does this one say, demanded Phil Jr. Phyllis read, what runs but has no legs? A clock, said Pete, but the third clue was nowhere near the grandfather clock. An engine, said Phil Jr., but no one knew of any engines in Puxatawney Hollow. I know, shouted Willis, the stream. They all rushed down to the stream. There was clue number three. The young groundhogs followed the clues farther and farther to the tree house to the blackberry patch, and to the shore of Puxatawney Pond. This must be the last one, Phyllis said. She brushed snowflakes out of her eyes. 
to read the clue. What's sticky and sweet and found in a tree? That's easy, said Jill. They all dashed for the honey tree. There it is, shouted Willis, jumping up and down. What do you think it'll be? Phil Jr. asked as he lifted the lid. It was another note. April Fool, you win but lose. Look again at all your clues. They can all be solved, you see, with one answer, and it's me. I don't get it, said Pete. Phyllis explained. It means that there's one thing that's the answer to all the clues. But right now we have a bigger problem. Look at the snow. It was a problem indeed, falling thick and fast, making it impossible to see more than a few feet in any direction. How will we find our way home, worried Willis. Phyllis looked at the little groundhogs. They were depending on her to get them home safely. How was she going to do it? All Phyllis could see was swirling white and something flapping in the wind against a nearby sugar maple. The sap line. That's it, she cried. Everybody, stay with me. The groundhogs clung to the sap line. Phyllis led the way from maple tree to maple tree, all the way back to the sugar house. Thank goodness you're back, cried Aunt Patsy. We should have known you were right about the blizzard, said Uncle Phil. Looks like we're the April Fools. All's well that ends well, said Aunt Sassy. But we never solved the treasure hunt, said Phil Jr. Yes, we did, Phyllis said triumphantly. What goes up in the morning and down at night? what runs but has no legs, and what's sticky and sweet and found in a tree. Sap, the treasure is right here. Sure enough, in the back corner of the sugar house was another treasure chest. Phyllis lifted the lid eagerly. It's empty, she cried. What? All the groundhogs crowded in to look. April fool, shouted Phyllis, and she tossed handfuls of maple candy in the air for everyone to share. Thank you for joining me for today's story. I hope you enjoyed it. Please remember to like and subscribe and hit the bell button so you receive notifications about new stories. If you'd like a copy of today's book, please see below in the description for the link. I wish everyone a wonderful April Fool's Day tomorrow and I look forward to seeing you all again very soon for some more fun stories. Until then, bye!